Hi and welcome to this video looking at how to fill out your tax information on Google AdSense. YouTube creators like myself have been receiving this email over the last couple of weeks and it's been causing some confusion. I thought I'd therefore walk through the process I followed recently in order to submit my tax information to Google. Before we begin I should be clear that I'm not a tax advisor or accountant. Please don't therefore take this as any form of advice but hopefully seeing what I did provide some confidence to others. Okay, for this exercise, I'm gonna recommend that you have two browser tabs open, one of which will be the Manage Tax Information form from Google AdSense, which we're obviously completing, and the other one is going to be a help article that I'll put a link to in the description. This has really helpful extra information about each of the questions that we're going to be completing. So if I don't describe something clearly, you can go through this help article and you'll probably find a lot of the help that you're looking for. And hopefully Google's going to continue to develop that article to make it really easy going forward. So if I come back to the manage tax information screen, this is one you can get to from the payments part of your Google AdSense if necessary. As the breadcrumb shows here, the settings within payments and you'll find an option within that screen that gives you a managed tax info under the US tax information area. But I've actually just clicked it because Google's been chasing it recently. There's this section at the top of all my Google AdSense pages and I just found it easiest to click this manage tax info button. So I've got no tax information as it says here on file with Google, which means I need to fill this form in. I'm going to start by clicking the add tax info button. At this point, I'm going to be asked to sign into my Google account, which I will do. And that takes us into the questions itself. So we're now being asked what type of account and then the name of my current account. So you'll obviously get the name of your account here and whether it's an individual account or non-individual, so something like a business account. Now, I'm already aware that mine is an individual, but if I wasn't aware, there is a little help article here or icon that can give us a little pop-up so we don't even need to leave the screen. And this is a bad example of it, but we can go over to the help guide and we'll see a question that says, what's the difference between individual and non-individual? It happens to be pretty much the same text, but nevertheless, it's a good example where as we work through the forms, we'll find this help guide follows through with us. So back to the form, I'm saying I've got an individual account, hitting next, Am I a citizen or a resident of the United States? No, I'm not. I'm a citizen and resident of the United Kingdom in my case. Which form do I need to fill in? It does hint that the most common one is the one that I'm going to need to fill in, the W8BEN form. But this is a great example. There's no help here in addition to what's on the screen basically there. But if we go through to our help guide again, it's in roughly the right order. So the very next question here is about which tax form needs to be completed and there's a lot more information here which helps cement the fact for me that yes W8BEN is correct for my personal circumstance and you can obviously check the article to make sure it's correct for you as well. So back on the form I'm happy I've selected the right options so I'm going to choose to now start that form. As soon as this loads, we can see the name of my account. You won't because I've blurred it out because it's personal information, but it isn't actually correct in terms of my tax documents, which is what it asks to have included here. I'm going to put in here what appears on my tax letters from the UK HMRC, the tax office. So I'm going to use example information here. This is similar to my actual name. I'm going to use a title and I've got a middle name as well. And this is effectively the form as shown on tax letters. It's very faded text underneath, but Google is being clear here. It needs to be as shown on our tax document. So don't just skip it because it's pre-populated. It's quite possibly not uh, correct information initially. On the next question, we get down to the doing business as or disregarded entity name. I don't know if that means anything to US citizens. It sounds odd to me. It sounds fairly similar to a trading name maybe in UK speak, but a little bit of look at the information provided isn't necessarily helping me. But a jump over to the help article 
and moving down through, we're going to look at the key terms in this case. So it does talk to our legal name, but it also talks here about DBA and disregarded entity. And reading this seems quite clear to me that I don't need to include my channel name, which is what I'd particularly thought might need to be included. Although I guess Google might have pre-populated that if that was obvious, but I'm now happy these are correct. So I can move on to my country or region of citizenship, which for me is going to be the United Kingdom. The next question talks about our taxpayer identification number. So in my case, it's going to need to be a foreign number because I don't hold a US international tax identification number or a social security number. So there isn't any particularly helpful information. There is a link here. But again, if I go back to the help information and go in order down to the next one, this is a particularly helpful answer. I think Google's done a great job here. It gives a number of country examples, including United Kingdom, which is very helpful for me. And it confirms for me that you can actually use your national insurance number, which in my case, I know off the top of my head. Um, but it can also use your UTR, which is the number that tends to appear at the top of letters from the HMRC, the UK tax office. So um, for anyone filling this in from the UK, you can use either of those. It appears as the identifier, but it's best to check this at the time of completion and just make sure the help article is still saying what it says for me at the moment. So when I filled this in, I put in my real um, national insurance number. This is the kind of format it sits in. But in order to make sure you can see, I'm using demonstration details. So hitting next, it's jumped down. But if I scroll up, you can see it's completed step one and it's showing me here the information I actually input, which is really useful. On to the address. I think this is self-explanatory, but we could go through to the help article if we need more. Um, I'm not using a post office box. I'm not using an in-care address. So I simply need to provide my permanent residence. Again, I'll put some dummy information in here. Doesn't like that. There we go. Um, so the postal address is probably the same as residency for most people. It certainly is for me. So I'm going to tick that and that completes our step two, which joins step one at the top here as completed. So we're working our way down through these steps. Are you claiming a reduced rate against the tax treaty? Well, I would imagine a lot of people completing this are. Otherwise, there's probably little point in completing it. But you don't need to know too much information here because Google's going to do all the hard work, hopefully, for us. So I'm going to assume that, yes, there is some kind of treaty in place with the UK. I'm going to fill that in to say it's the case for the UK because that's where I am based. Now it's asking me which services I'm actually looking to claim that against. It's not just about services you're consuming today. It's very clear here that you can also include future services. But I'm certainly using AdSense and the YouTube partner program today. So if we choose against AdSense here, only being offered one article and paragraph within the treaty for the UK. And I'm being offered two different rates. Do I want to pay the default non-treaty rate or do I want the reduced rate of 0% in the UK's case? Well, I think it's fairly obvious. It makes sense to claim the lower rate that we can get. This legal statement is just clarifying that I am appropriate to the treaty's terms in that I've not got a permanent base over in the US and that is correct. YouTube partner program is going to be extremely similar for me. Once again, only one choice for the article and paragraph and identical options in terms of the percentages to pay. Again, I'm going to choose 0%. I could move forward here, but in my view, as I'm allowed to claim for future income, it does actually make sense just in case I ever utilize these services to make sure I don't pay US tax unnecessarily. So again, I'm just going to go through here and say, whilst I don't expect to ever need it, having that 0% already in place, oh, I forgot to tick the important certify button on the last one. Um, that makes sure I've now agreed for all possible services that are applicable at the time I'm completing this form. So if I hit next on that, 
can scroll back up again. Step one to complete, two to complete, and slightly more garbled, but that is step three, all the answers I gave there. So on step four, it's really just regurgitating the information back to us. These are the four forms as a result of the services I ticked. So you may have a different number of forms coming back to you, depending on which ones you ticked. This is Google's interpretation of those forms. So if I click on them, it'll open the official US form and you can see the information I've provided has been input or proposed by Google. They're very short forms as well, single page with a signature. And this is effectively the form that we're filling out that Google's making a little easier for us here. Now, because these are pretty legal forms, I would suggest hitting the download button on each of these so that you've got a local copy just in case you ever had a challenge in the future around these and going through all four of them and just being absolutely certain that the information in them is accurate because this is tax information at the end of the day. So really important to get correct. Once we're happy, we can click this button to say we confirm that those are indeed accurate and hit the next button to move to the next stage. So we're now on to the second to last step, step five. Little bit of legal speak here just to make sure we're absolutely covered for the fact that we have filled this in and we're well aware what we have done. And we're being asked for our full legal name. You may have seen in the help guide earlier, there's information there reminding us around legal name, but this obviously needs to be your proper full name. I don't think the title is needed. So in my case, I just filled this in with my full name, including my middle name to show that I am signing this one off. And I'm confirming that yes, indeed, it's me filling in this form. I'm not an agent on behalf of other people, albeit you may need to tick this if of course you're filling this in on behalf of somebody else. So I'm now going to click next and I get taken to the very final step. We can partly tell that because we've got a nice big submit button at this point and two final questions. Thank goodness. Has the individual or entity identified performed any activities or services for Google within the US? If we've got any questions around this, any confusion, again, Google's being really helpful. We can go back to the help information here. And there's a question here about what exactly are US activities? And there's some information here to hopefully clarify, as it does for me, that I've not performed any US activities. So I'm going to say no to this and I'm going to confirm that I'm absolutely sure effectively that that is the case. It's being really helpful here, being clear. We're talking about physical location as part of this question. So now on to the final question. This is a little bit confusing as an area, but there is some pop up information there's also further information in the usual help page, but my interpretation of this is it's the difference between whether we have received payments from Google to date or not. This top option is for when we haven't previously received payments. That means that everything will take effect from the point of signature, whereas this bottom one covers scenarios where we have previously received payments from Google, which is the case for myself. The benefit of this option is that Google will seek to reclaim any taxes previously paid where it's allowable by the US government. So as I've previously received payments from Google, I believe I need to choose this bottom option. I'm ticking here to say that nothing has changed since the 1st of January 2020. So everything in this form has been static since the 1st of January 2020, which is correct in my case. There is a section here for including any changes that have happened within that time period, but in my case, there are none, so I don't need to fill it in. So I think we're finally there. The form is complete, so it's time to now submit it. Having submitted the form, I'm now being brought back to the manage tax information screen, which rather than saying the form has not been completed, now provides my details showing what has been claimed and in fact shows that I have immediately been approved automatically. They've obviously managed to do an immediate lookup of my details. So everything is a green status for me. I've got an option to submit a new form if I want to update anything. But in my case, I've now got 0% against all the possible options available to me. So I don't see any reason to change this other than if I have a name or an address change. Form completion really is as simple as that, but I find that help guide particularly helpful in making sure that you've done this completely accurately. So 
please do be very careful as you complete this. This is obviously tax information and therefore must be treated with extreme care to ensure you're being accurate in what you submit. But hopefully this guide's been helpful to you. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.